Kenny, how excited to start you? I mean, period. Just to Fired up. Back. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Uh, four quarterbacks on scholarship. How challenging, or is that not challenging to try to get all the equal reps, as, as Coach Norbell talked about, in terms of battle? Yeah. I mean, it's obviously challenging, but I think the, the goal going in to camp is the same it's always been. It's just to get better every single day. The goal is not who's going to be the starter. The goal is not who's going to play how many snaps versus Notre Dame. The goal is not what's our record going to be. The goal is to be the very best you can possibly be. Because if we're all just the very best we can possibly be, then we'll win the most games we possibly can. So that is the focus every day. That's what we're going to talk about today in our meeting, is just be the very best you can be and control the controllers. How impressed are you that Jordan and McKenzie, I guess specifically those two, are able to kind of work side by side so well? And, I mean, they seem to really get along genuinely when we saw them in Charlotte at kickoff. Yeah, I think that the competitive nature of them both. I mean, when you go versus a, a competitor and you enjoy competing, it's fun. I mean, people enjoy competition. So being able to wake up every day in spring ball and throughout summer and see somebody go out there and compete in whatever they did and know you have to match that, you know that person's making you better. And it goes back to what is their ultimate goal? If they read social media, their ultimate goal is play every single snap. But the reality is that's not their goal, right? Their goal is to just be the very best they can be because if they achieve that, they're going to achieve more than they ever thought they could. So they're buying into that, and because of that, they're kind of growing together. Getting the right guy is the most important thing. Pick, picking the right guy, having him win the job. How much does time, timeline, urgency of figuring out who that's going to be kind of factor? I, I think that type of that's always a, the question is, is there a time? I think the time is when it's the time. I don't think there's a, it's this date or that date or this or that. It's just, if somebody separates themselves to that point, then they separate themselves to that point. If they don't, then they don't. And that's on them. And that's what we talk about is, when if it's 100% known who it is, then it's 100% known. Do we even have to say anything? If it's not, then we should know where it is. You guys should know where it is the entire time because you're on the same field we are in the same meeting rooms. It, it seems like a philosophical thing. Some coaches will be like, you know, I want to get it done. The quicker my team knows, the better off it'll be chemistry-wise. Other guys think, you know, the, the longer they're competing, the better they're making each other. Is it a personal preference thing, or is it, to your point, like when you see it, do you have to even say it, but I mean, you still have to say it. Right? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. I think our <laughs> our team and our culture is based off competition, and it's based off getting 1% better. So that can't just be with every position but the quarterback. You've got to have that competition in every aspect of your program, and that's who we are, and that's who we are at quarterback. Coach talked about like the talking, Jordan had an unreal accuracy in, in the spring. His footwork had kind of made a real huge turn. And what sort of growth did you guys see from Jordan in the spring? And how excited is he carried over, I guess? Sorry. It was awesome. I think, uh, you know, going through last fall, I f felt like he improved the consistency of his drop and then being able to get him for a whole spring and just getting his back from underneath him, getting his front hip to his target, all the little things, he started to feel what it was supposed to feel like again, what it felt like when he was in high school when everybody said he was a passer, right? He started to get that feeling back where, all right, this is good, this is bad. And when you get that, you get in that rhythm, you can start to auto-correct. And once you get to that point where you can auto-correct, you know, it kind of becomes addicting. Like you go out on your own and you may throw because you can kind of fix a little, you can't fix everything on your own, but you can fix the, some of the bigger issues. And I feel like you saw that with Jordan. You, you, you would see him, I mean, in the locker room when I could see him like turning his shoulder to create torque, like just naturally because he's thinking about it. Those types of things all add up because the little things add up to become big things. Is it a luxury that you seem to have such like mentally strong guys in Jordan's career? I don't think he was in the best situation in Louisville. Comes here, there, there's a lot of upheavals, and you guys kind of re reignite his love for the game. Everything McKenzie's kind of been through. Having guys that have that kind of backstory is that is that a luxury? Is that a benefit? Does that, does that make you have better quarterback play? I mean. Anytime you've had to respond to adversity, it's a positive because you've done it before. And I mean, we're reading the book, Chop Wood, Carry Water. And uh, you know, it's all about respond, responding to adversity and focusing on the now. And I think anytime that, that you get to do that, it's just an opportunity for growth. And those guys have had that opportunity to grow because of those adverse situations. So I do think it's a positive anytime those guys get to face challenges. Running back position? Pretty nice one-two punch. Is that what you guys like to have? Yeah, I mean, our running back position, you look at the, the statistics over the years. I mean, we had 
a 2,000 yard back, 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 back to back years from two different backs. Accounted for 4,000 yards at the running back position, over 3,000 yards for three straight years. So we have to have a multitude of backs. It can't just be one, it can't just be two. It's how many of them can we put on the field and how many of them can be productive for us because we're going to try to find our best 11 and put those best 11 on the field. Is Lawrence a guy that you'll have to use in small doses or is he a guy that you think can? If need be, can, can go 25, 30 touches a game. I mean, that's a guy who as many touches as he can handle. And I mean, him being year two, I think that that's one thing. It's kind of kind of play by year. I can't give you a specific amount. He's got to go out there and prove that he can be consistent in fall camp. But you did see, you know, the ability to be electric and dynamic. Uh, I mean, he was, what, the highest yards per carry or something like that amongst freshmen or one of those stats that was positive. That wasn't by accident. And uh, so you want to get him the football, but you just got to find that balance. Before you guys got here, offensive line was much maligned. How much of the growth from last year was it? Is it Coach Atkins and it's just your guys, I guess, friendly offensive scheme kind of resulted in that? Yeah, I mean, I think Coach Atkins does a phenomenal job. And then it's all the same guys coming back again. And you can't you can't replicate reps. I mean, you just you can't get them back. You either get them or you don't. So those guys getting, a lot of those guys played the year before we got here a little bit. They had to learn a new system. And then they played again. And just like with quarterback position or all positions, those guys had to learn a new verbiage, right? The, the issue is when you have to learn a new verbiage, you're learning a new language. But when you learn a new language, you don't learn what an adjective is. You just learn that's the word you're supposed to use, right? We're not teaching people what a subject is, what a noun is, what an, adje an, an adjective is. We're teaching them football more than we're teaching them scheme. And that's where adjustments failed last year was we didn't understand enough football to make adjustments. We understood the initial scheme for the game plan, but we couldn't adjust. This year, we're, we're truly teaching our guys football, and we're getting to that stage. Because of that, our offensive line uh, is having an uh, insurmountable amount of growth. Did you, did you guys go into the season hoping you could teach football, lay everything out, or was there a certain point where you guys knew, like, all right, man, this is all we can really ask of these guys at this point. We have to make the best of this. I think we learned that throughout the year. I think it was a little bit of give and take. Uh, we're such a, you know, if you look at us, we're very multiple in what we do. Uh, offensively, that's why I think we were 40th in the country last year in yards before contact. You know, getting our guys to that point to make a play one-on-one -on -one is because we change run schemes week by week, uh, change formations. So I think there is that balance of how much can we help our guys with the scheme, but how much can our guys learn because we didn't get that spring? What was that balance? So I think we kind of teetered back and forth last year, and this year we, we really don't have to do that. I think our guys have a great knowledge of, of the system, and now we get to teach them football. Is there a multitude of, do you have a, a good skill set, kind of diversity at the wide receiver position, and, and what's Andrew Parchment going to kind of factor in for you guys? I think we do. I mean, I love our young guys. Uh, I love the vets that are coming back. I mean, Keyshawn's getting healthy. Pokey's gained weight. I mean, Josh Burrell's out there making plays at two freshman in the spring game. Malik McLean's gained 15 pounds. Parchman's been almost a thousand yard receiver uh, at a Power Five institution. So you have all these different pieces coming in uh, that it's just a, a situation where all those guys are going to help us. And depth at that position is critical, especially when you play at a tempo offense, because if you can substitute and keep guys fresh, you keep speed on defenders. Does it matter who's throwing them the ball? I think we try to make a big deal about that timing, rhythm, chemistry, or, or is the receiver's job a receiver's job? I don't think it matters uh, who's throwing the ball unless it's a lefty, which we don't have one of those on our roster. But I do think there, yes. is, there is a difference uh, when they have to catch a left-handed football just because the rotation of the football. At the end of the day, it's their job to catch it. But uh, I would say that would be the only difference. But whether it's Jordan, McKenzie, Tate, uh, Chuba, none of that, that catch the football. Cam McDonald, can he make a, a big impact on his team this season? Does he have the, the ability, you think? No, no question. I think he's a guy who has the ability in year two. He's got some leadership qualities, and uh, I'm fired up for what he can do. Jackson West, the guy that could contribute early on, you think? Jackson West, obviously, anytime you're a true freshman, and uh, he went through a little bit of spring, we got to see him play with live bullets. You know, it's, it's easy to be up on a whiteboard and say the right answer. Right? It's easy to go in a one-on-one -on -one and win a rep, but can, can you combine all, both of those things together along with 
all the distractions that are college football and all the distractions of the movement of defenders in front of you to stay focused on your task. And those are all the things that that's kind of the growth that you have with young players. Okay, last one. And just, just Chuba, it's kind of unconventional to have him rehab back at home. Just how much of that is you guys having a good relationship with him or how much of that just trusting what you guys have here that you know he would be fine coming back? Yeah, I think it's great because it, it was a situation where he could go home and just kind of relax, you know, and we, we were lucky because, you know, online schooling, he could still take classes and all that. And it's just the trust that we have in him to, to go back you know, him being here and rehabbing when we're in spring ball and seeing all his teammates going out there and him saying, man, I wish I could do that. We both, we all decided it was best for him to remove himself from that situation so we could truly focus on him, focus on his development to get better. And I trust him. I trust his dad, who's a guy who's going to be on him to, to improve himself and get healthy. And he returned, and, and he's healthy. He's 100% healthy, and uh, I'm fired up. And that's a testament to the family he has at home and the structure he has a, at home that we trusted them to manage that, and a testament to his dad. What are a couple things you've learned about McKenzie since he's been here that maybe surprised you or you didn't know or expect when you were here? He's a funny guy. I mean, you, you, you think of McKenzie as this hard worker and this serious all-ball, all-the-time guy. But, and he is all those things, but McKenzie's got a huge personality and he's extremely funny and he's he's a bubbly person to, I don't even know if that's a good word, bubbly, but he's that type of person to be around, right? You, pe people smile when you're around him. And that's something that shows up in the leadership too, right? One thousand percent, that's a, a, a leadership style. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, your thoughts on the quarterback competition heading into, uh, heading into camp? We just want to get better every day. Yeah. That is truly, we're not focused on the future. We're not focused on a week from now. We're not focused on game day. We're not focused on wanting to play in the NFL, right? At the end of the day, if you just get better at better every single day, if we push each other to be better, whatever happens, however the chips may fall, we're all going to be better than we would have been if we didn't have that mindset, which means we're all going to achieve our goals that we truly want at the end of the day to a higher level. What are a couple ways that you kind of want to see Jordan improve since the game? I want to see him make decisions a little bit quicker in spring. And he made a huge jump from fall to spring. In terms of progressing his eyes, I want to see more growth in that. Second thing I want to see is I want to see more, more comfortable in the pocket. He improved in that in spring. You saw him work up in the pocket a few times at, at practices. I want to see more growth in that. I'm, I'm trying to challenge him to do the things that naturally he's so good at the others. We know what Jordan can do with his legs outside the pocket. We know he can has a strong arm and can get, get rid of the thing down the field. I want to force him into those uncomfortable situations uh, this fall camp. Could you, could you receive a, an opportunity to have say two quarterbacks on the field at the same time because they give you the skill set and playmaking options to succeed on say first down or in a situation? I think we're going to put the best players on the field. If that's two quarterbacks, that's two quarterbacks. If that's three quarterbacks, it's three. If it's four, it's four. We're going to put the best 11 guys on the football field, the best 11 playmakers on the football field and try to get them the ball within good numbers, with leverage, and space, which is grass. So first of all, Coach, what's it like to have the continuity of a more normal offseason? What's that been like for you and the staff? Uh, it's been great. It's been uh, something that we've looked forward to um, just since the end of last year to the beginning of this year. You know, it's just been something that's – we needed that investment. We needed that time. We needed that consistency and excited to be able to show what's, what's come from it. So what would you say since uh, spring to now uh, are some of the big things that you've been hitting on and communicating to – on the coach level, coach to coach level, or coach to player level? What are, what are some of the priorities you've had? Well, just the consistent work, right? And everybody from all levels of the defense, the communication together, and just even the on the field and the off the field times, you know, just making sure those guys understand is how much ground we can gain over this time. And, you know, I've seen a lot of sacrifice from a lot of players, and whether it was guys that were in their first semester here or guys that were here with us last year. You know, and just to see that mix together now and see that chemistry develop and that team camaraderie in all of it. Just looking forward to getting it all together and getting on the field tomorrow. So uh, we had a feature over at War Chan on the strength program, Coach Storms, and, and Stephen Dix was featured on there. I mean, he's obviously going to be a headliner, but 
who are some of the guys that you've seen make transformations in the offseason and, and continue to develop as they're trying to get to the right weight and the right speed and size and agility? Yeah, I mean, up front, you know, you've seen Fabian Lovett really develop, you know, just his body and, you know, he's in the best shape of his life. Um, really seen a lot of development with Quayshawn Fuller. You know, he's done a really nice job. Um, Jarrett Jackson, you know, that, there's been some guys that have really, you've seen some real gains from where they were to where they're going right now. You know, you saw, you mentioned Stephen Dix. Um, I didn't know that would happen the way he's developed, but just, you know, his mindset, his mentality was the reason we invested all those reps in him last year. Um, but even Amari, you know, just his body has continued to develop in a way that we think it should, and he's put a great amount of work into it. You know, nope. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, if you don't mind going into uh, maybe the linebacker group then, because you mentioned a couple of those guys there, uh, how's that going to look at the start of camp, and, and how do you expect uh, camp to, to play out at, at that position? Yeah, well, I think, you know, Amari's played a good amount of football for us. You know, we're going to put him in position where he can really have an impact on this football team. You know, Steven had an unbelievable amount of reps. You know, uh, having Emmett Rice come back, you know, will be important to us. You know, DJ Lundy had some really valuable reps last year. You know, at the end of the couple games last year, he was in on critical times. Um, Kalen Deloach was somebody that played. I mean, he started at the beginning of the season, then didn't play as well, and then came back during the middle of the season, had some things in special teams, but really came on in the middle of spring, and we're expecting big things from him. Um, Jaleel McCray was somebody that played in spotted action, but as part of that group. The Kalen Brooks was off and on an injury. Um, and then Jordan Eubanks is somebody brand new to the program um, that we've got some high hopes for and has shown some good progress here in the last three months. He's been here in the summer. But that's definitely a group that we're looking to see some marked improvement. But I think we've got good pieces in there that we can kind of progress with that group right now. And then also in the secondary, you've got a lot of options there. How are you going to well, sort all that out? That's got to be a good well, problem, I would imagine. Listen, it's about we got to develop roles right now. I mean, it's got to happen. I mean, we need to develop consistency because guys got to work together. You know, so, you know, obviously we brought in some people, but, you know, you get a Jarvis Brownlee that you invested in last year playing a lot of football, right? So we get him back. Um, Jerry and Jones, we get back, you know, has played a lot of football. You know, Akeem Dent is another piece that, you know, we're trying to get in the right position to play. You know, we brought in Jamie Robinson, who I think has, you know, a really good skill set that we're going to be able to use in, in a couple different ways. Um, you know, other guys from last year, you know, we – you name it, he started at safety last year. I can give you the names and you can go through it, but from Brennan Gant, you know what I mean, all the way down to Renardo Green to Travis J, uh, Sidney Williams, you know, there's a lot of names that played a lot of football last year. You know, now our job is to, you know, listen, you can't help injuries, but what we can help is keeping guys in position so they can be developed and learn through repetition of how it needs to look. And then once you learn that, now you're playing besides the same guys so you can play together a little bit more. And I think develop the roles here early in camp, which we started doing in the spring, is critical to us gaining steam in the back end. So we asked this question to Coach Norvell uh, about in the summer, if you need to deliver a message to your players, either position group or the defense as a whole in your, in your case, who are some of the guys that you would turn to in that circumstance? If you needed a, a message to get home, who would you call into your office or who would you reach out to? Yeah, I think up front, you know, it, I kind of go at all different levels. But, you know, I think Amari Gaynor and Steven Dix are somebody that have, have played for us the last year and a half. We have some good trust in them. You know, um, Jerry and Jones in the back end, you know, just trying to work through some consistency. And, you know, I would say that back end, it's more of a group effort than an individualized effort, though. You know, up front, you know, I think right now, even with the two new guys of Kier and Jermaine and Fabian, you know, I think those guys are important for us to try and develop that message um, from the front end. Do you go into getting Marcus Kushney uh, yeah. fairly late in the process? You heard really good things about him so far. I guess how important was it to get an extra experienced player? Yeah, well, Marcus was somebody, I mean, listen, as a program, we're always recruiting as a group effort. We're trying to identify the needs, right? We went out and brought in Pierre and Jermaine uh, because we thought that was the fit. That's what we needed to do. Um, we were looking to sign another edge player. And uh, Marcus was somebody that I had known about from his high school coach back at Palm Beach. Uh, who coaches up in Georgia now. So we knew the player, we knew the person. Um, it was just about having the right scholarship numbers left. 
and it got down to late, you know, with the with the transfer portal, how it goes, you're always trying to keep the next option ready. And he was the best available player that we had on defense. And Coach Norvell and the offense, we had to go through that process to find out what was going to be the best fit. It came down to the end of it, and you know, we were lucky to be able to have enough have a scholarship available with enough time to be able to get Marcus back home. So um, I think he's he, I think he's got a legitimate pass rush skill set, but he's strong enough, he's got long enough arms to be able to have an impact on first and second down too. So, I mean, listen, we brought in three defensive, three defensive ends, three edge players, and we thought we needed it to develop with the group that we signed and the group that's here. And, um, I'm excited to see what it is. He's been here for about two weeks now, so day one's tomorrow for him, so I'm excited about it. Can you speak to the depth that you got, just even just body count on the edge, defensive edge position, experienced guys, freshmen, I guess how important was that for you to, to stop? I mean, you guys could just do the math, right? From who we signed to portal to high school players, I mean, I truly believe in, in football now, like at defensive end, you can you can change games and you can have major impacts um, if we get those positions playing the right way. And so we invested in that position. It was important for us, you know, and the numbers were a little bit different when we got here. We're trying to get the roster exactly the way we want it. So now with the portal, you're able to go and get some guys with low eligibility. We can sign the... Byron Turner, the Patrick Payton, the George Wilsons, the Chambres, right? The Josh Farmers, that group to try to add long-term depth. But then we went out and signed three defensive ends and we signed Fabian the year before to try and create it the way we need it to be in order for us to play how we need to play up front. Earlier you were talking about the defensive backfield, the numbers there. Uh, how many guys do you think are capable of playing multiple positions? And how I guess with what you think they're doing with a little bit more five person, how big is versatility? Yeah, I mean, versatility is important, but I, I think what we need to do is lock in on roles, right? Now, maybe the role is versatility. You know, with somebody like Jamie Robinson, he will be playing safety, he will be playing nickel, right? Um, somebody like Jarvis, who played nickel and corner last year, that'll stay the same. But for the most part, we're trying to keep guys in their roles, in their positions so they can get better at it and then game repetitions at it. Um, you know, there are some safeties, whether it's gonna be Travis, whether it's gonna be Sydney, whether it's gonna be Brennan Gant, whether it's gonna be Renardo, right? Of finding some other ways to use the safeties if we have to get extra DBs on the field. So that is that, but I would say truthfully going into camp, Jamie um, and Jarvis are really the guys that will probably roll a little bit out of the spots. Um, and then Kevin Knowles will play some deck and play some corner as well. How interesting has it been, you know, just acquiring so many defensive ends and, and having so many new players to work with? Yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been exciting. We knew when uh, when we came in and we we're going to be a, a four down front that the, two of the key positions in that was going to be our defensive end play. And we knew we had to, to really hit in recruiting at those spots. And I'm really excited about the young guys that we brought in. We've got four freshmen that are going to be playing defensive end. We've got the three transfers coming in. So we've essentially overhauled the position uh, and also had some guys in the program that, that are working and doing a good job. So um, I feel really good about where we're at going into the year. How has that competition kind of benefited the entire group uh, this offseason? Well, I mean, the, the reality is going to be that you're only going to play four or five guys in, in a game. And we have eight or nine capable guys probably that they are going to have a chance to play. And, um uh, you know, it's going to be a competition every day, and you've got to bring it every day. And, and uh, you know, I think the guys understand that, and, and uh, they're certainly going to recognize once we get into camp that there's only a limited amount of reps, and not everyone's going to get a, a ton of opportunities to show what they have, but when you have the opportunities, you better make the most of them. Uh, Jermaine kind of talked about ACC kickoff, you know, being a leader, and uh, even though he's newer to the team, but kind of talk about what have you seen from him, you know, behind the scenes, really? No, he, you know, he's come in and worked hard. Um, you know, both I would say both he and Kier uh, have, have really done a nice job coming in, integrating with the rest of the team, working hard, um, trying to lead and, and get out front, even though they're new. And uh, the guys have a lot of respect for him because at the end of the day, both Kier and Jermaine have a, have a good resume. Um, they come from, from good programs and they played a lot of football. So um, I think the guys you know, automatically kind of had, had a level of respect for them. And the fact that they come in and work as hard as they both do um, absolutely got everybody's attention. How much does it help having two veterans like that come in, especially after losing um, Janarius and uh, Kando? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, because there was a, a huge void in terms of 
you know, I guess for whatever reason, between uh, we had a bunch of we had, uh, K- uh, Kendo and J Rob from a year ago, and then a bunch of freshmen. Like there wasn't a lot of in between. Um, so having kind of a, a more veteran guys coming in, and, and uh, Kier and Jermaine, and, and now Marcus Cushney, it does kind of soften that blow and, and give us some older leaders and some experienced guys. <laughs> Is there anyone that uh, on the defensive end spot that's kind of shown them maybe an ability to move inside? Anyone that's kind of shown some versatility, maybe? Yeah, I mean, we got some guys that have some flexibility in terms of, of position. Uh, we're going to look at some things in camp. You know, I, I think it's a little early to, to put it too much out there, but uh, I think I think we're going to have some flexibility just because of some body types and athleticism up there. <laughs> um, talk about maybe uh, uh, Marcus Cushney and you know what was he bring? You know. Yeah, he's a, you know, when he came, he worked out for us. Uh, he worked really hard in his workout. You can tell from all the background that we've done on him and talking to the former coaches, people who've been around him, what a what a great work ethic he has. And uh, you know, I think that's going to be great for the room. You know, I'm, I'm excited about that. I haven't had a chance to work with him very much because uh, he just got here, just got cleared and everything. But uh, if he brings that work ethic and the toughness that he's built a reputation to have, uh, it, it will absolutely help us. Coach Sean Fuller is a guy you, you have had a chance to work a lot with. You know, um, looks like he's in great shape and feeling really positive. You know, what kind of growth have you seen from him since you've arrived? Uh, just on maturity, you know. I mean, he was a redshirt freshman that, that first year I came in. He had never played. I don't think he really probably totally understood all of what it would take to be successful at this level. Um, but he's worked his butt off, and he's had a really good offseason. Uh, we're going to see how that translates uh, tomorrow when we get on the field. How excited is just, it's just your position group for the start of camp? And I'm ready. I mean, it's been a lot of work going into it, uh, a lot of preparation, a lot of meetings, and now it's time to get it going. What's the most important thing to make sure that the pass rush is going to be where it needs to be this season? Uh, you know, make sure we got the right guys, obviously, out there to, to fit the roles that we need. And then just to continue to work the fundamentals that lead to the success. You know, I mean, guys have certain skill sets, but it's, it's our job to work in the right place to be successful. Moving over to special teams, you know, is, is there anyone that's uh, anyone in the freshman class you're particularly excited for in, in that unit? Uh, there's there's uh, several guys that came in as part of the freshman class that I'm really excited about. I think a guy like Kevin Knowles and Josh Burrell. Or, um, you know, I'm trying to. I don't want to pick just a couple guys out, but I mean, <laughs> all those guys came in that worked hard. Um, I think there's going to be an opportunity for them to play. How has the kicking competition gone so far with uh, Ryan? We'll see you tomorrow. So it all starts tomorrow. They were pretty even coming out of spring ball, and <laughs> that was kind of where the competition left off. And we resume it again tomorrow. Coach, hi, Jerry Coates with the ICL. Yeah. See you again. Uh, Keir Thomas is yep. uh, somebody I don't know much about. Yep. Um, what can you tell, tell us about him? So Keir, uh, originally from Miami, uh, loved Florida State growing up. Uh, went, ended up going to the University of South Carolina. Uh, had a good career, though. You know, I, I have good relationships with guys that were on that staff. And uh, you know, they all had nothing but great things to say about Keir both of who he was as a player, but also who he was as a person, or who he is as a person. And uh, all of that has translated since he's gotten here. He's a, he has a leadership quality to him. He's a hard worker. He's smart. And, and I'm thankful and excited that he's, he's part of what we're doing. What, what does he bring to the, to the position to segment right? He's a bigger body defensive end for us who also has some, some pass rush ability. So just having that physicality is going to be one experience. You know, he's played in some, some huge games over the course of his career, um, you know, played in some big time environments. So, you know, he's going to bring that leadership and experience, but he's also going to, he's a talented kid. So he's going to bring a lot from that end as well. Um, I know he was dinged up and he's gone through a rehab. Do you expect him to be, uh, you know, full speed of practice uh, this summer? Yeah, that's our anticipation. And obviously, because he is coming off an injury, we got to be smart uh, in, in terms of how much load we put on him through, uh, through the preseason. But there's there's no issues going into tomorrow. Okay, cool. Um, your other positions, is there some, uh, you got a couple of freshmen that came in. Yep. And uh, you've got to put some weight on, I'm sure, in sure. their maturity. But can you get us some production out of them this year? There's a chance. You know, we, we brought in four freshmen, um, all of whom are going to get a lot of reps throughout fall camp. I think there's a chance that uh, Patrick Payton or Byron Turner, Sean Bray Jackson uh, could possibly help us now. 
George Wilson has elite pass rush skill. He's still got to put on some weight. Um, so I think all in all, um, those guys are going to have an opportunity. But you know, it's going to be how quick they pick up you know the system, and and, uh, tr and, and it's a big transition from high school to college football. So uh, you know, a lot of that remains to be seen. But I'm excited about the group. And then you've got Johnson, who's uh, uh, you know obviously looked good this spring. Uh, how do you, what do you see his role being? Uh, what are you trying to get him involved in between now and another day? Well, I think Jermaine's got elite talent. I really do. Um, he he can probably be as good as he wants to be. Um, so this is a critical fall camp for him. He knows it's his last go around in college. Um, we want to make sure that we maximize this year for him. And uh, I'm excited to, to watch him go do it.